binomial distribution binomial distribution this is like an extension to the bernoulli distribution we already learned about bernoulli distribution and let us see what is the difference between bernoulli and binomial and when to use binomial right this is also a discrete probability distribution so this condition stays same with bernoulli and binomial coming to bernoulli there were two condition the first condition said only one trial would be there and the second condition said it would be a binary experiment that is bernoulli was used in order to model single trial of a binary experiment like a coin toss but you can toss only once and what is a binary experiment it will have only two outcomes which is success and failure or you can say one and zero where one denotes success and zero denotes failure in case of binomial you can this condition remains the same that is you can only have binary experiments but you can have n number of trials that is the difference between binomial and bernoulli distribution so coming to binomial distribution you can have not just one trial but n number of trials this is the only difference between binomial and bernoulli distribution so binomial distribution it models the number of success of or failure in a fixed number of bernoulli trials so why did i say number of successes because in case of bernoulli you had only two options one success or zero success in case of binomial you can have one success two success three success so on up to n successes so whatever be the number of success finding the probability for those many number of successes this is where binomial distribution comes into picture uh, so it is obvious for you right now that then there will be two parameters instead of just one which we had in case of bernoulli in binomial what are the two parameters first parameter would be n which is number of trials and second parameter would be probability so in case of bernoulli we had just one parameter that is a probability of success in case of binomial you have two parameters one is the probability of success in a single experiment and n is the total number of experiments that you do or total number of trials that you have so let us understand the pm of the probability mass function of a binomial distribution whenever you have a distribution it's very important that you understand what is the probability mass function that is how do you get this distribution so let us say in case of probability of x is equal to m what is my m m is the number of successes number of successes that i have so if i am having a total of n trials with a probability of p of success that is p is the probability of success in a single trial if i am having n different trial trials in which each trial has a probability p of success then what is my probability of getting m successes this is what my binomial distributions probability mass function should tell me let us try to understand the probability mass function first thing is how can i identify m different successes what is the probability of m successes m successes m different successes probability can be p into p into p into such m times why is it because first success has a probability p second success again has a probability p in total how many did i get i got m different successes which means my probability of m different successes should be p into p into p such m times which can be represented as p power m this is my probability of m successes right similarly if i am having m successes out of a total of n different experiments this would automatically mean i'll have n minus m different failure scenarios right what is the probability of n minus m failures it would be 1 minus p whole raised to n minus m why is it so because if my probability of success is p probability of failure has to be 1 minus p right and how many times did i get this 1 minus p probability that is for n minus m times because i have total of m successes out of 
n total experiment which means the remaining n minus m is my number of failures so now i know that my total probability of getting m successes, successes is p power m and my probability of getting n minus m, m failures is 1 minus p whole power n minus m just think this thing can i now write my probability mass function as p power m into 1 minus p whole power n minus m would this be correct if i write it as p power m into 1 minus p whole power n minus m do you find this correct or do you think there is something missing what i am writing is totally there are n trials out of which i am saying m are successes n minus m are failures so i am saying i am totally writing my probability as probability of m successes which is p power m into probability of n failures which is because totally there are n n experiments so i what did i do i just multiply the probabilities of each of those experiments so i did it like this p into p into p into so on m times and then 1 minus p into 1 minus p into so on up to n minus m times one thing is missing here that is if i am having m success and n failures this can happen in many different types of combinations that is i may have m different successes and then n different failures this is possible i can also have one failure then m different successes then few failures this is also possible i can also have maybe one success then a failure one success then a failure so on in which the number of successes is m and number of failures is n this is also possible so there are a lot of combinations in which the number of successes can be m and the number of failures can be n minus m so all these combinations have to be taken into consideration when i'm writing the probability mass function so how do i count all the combinations by introducing a new term which is ncm what is ncm ncm is the ways of number of ways of choosing m items from a total of n items so i am having a total of n items from which i am trying to pick m items what are the number of ways in which i can do that that is denoted by ncm so my probability mass function for the binomial distribution is ncm into p power m into 1 minus p whole power n minus m and it's important that you understand logically what each term is determining here my term of ncm this tells me how many ways i can choose m different successes from a total of n trials the second term p power m this tells me what is the probability of m different successes and 1 minus p whole power n minus m this tells me what is the probability of n minus m different failures so in total this will tell me what is the probability of having m successes and n minus m failures out of a total of n trials considering all the different combinations which can happen between m successes and m n minus m failures so this is my probability mass function once you understand this probability mass function the next step is to identify expectation right expectation and variance these are the two terms that we have to identify for any particular distribution coming to this binomial distribution what is the expectation so we already learned that expectation is sum over all the values of x x into probability of x this is how you normally say expectation so here what are the different values here the values of x are m so i have to sum over all values of m what i have to do m into probability of m this is what i have to find so what all values can m take there are total of n different trials so i can have zero successes it is possible zero success and n failures is possible similarly i can have one success and n minus one failures that is also possible similarly up to this can go to n that is m can take values from 0 to n any of these values can be taken by m now coming to expectation i have to see what is the expected number of successes that i'll get 
So in order to get the expected number of successes, I have to consider all the values M can take. So how can I take the sum? I have to take sum over sum over all the values of M. That is M equal to 0 to N. All the values of M. M into P of X is equal to M. This is what I have to find. How can I find this? Sum over all the values of M. M equal to 0 to N. M into what is this term p of x equal to m that is this term i can substitute this that is n c m p power m into 1 minus p whole raised to n minus m so this is my expectation and this term would be familiar to you from your 12 standard mathematics sum over all the terms of m that is m equal to 0 to n m into n c m p power m 1 minus p whole power n minus m so this thing from binomial theorem is n p so i can write this as this is equal to n into p so simply the expectation of a binomial distribution is n into p and if you logically think about this this makes a lot of sense that is let us say i am having a total of 10 experiments right I, I'm, I'm telling how this NP makes sense. That is, if you have a total of 10 experiments and I'm saying the probability of success is 0 0.6. That is 60% is your probability of success. So what is your expected value, expected number of successes out of your 10 experiment? It will be N into P, which is 0 0.6 into 10, which is 6. That is, if there are a total of 10 experiments, and if your probability of success is 0 0.6, then your expected number of successes is 6, which is very logical. That is, if you have 10 times you are doing an experiment, and I'm telling you that 60% is the chances of your success, then if there are 10 experiments, there will be 6 successes, which is logically correct. So your expectation is NP. Let us now understand variance. Variance. What is variance? Variance of a random variable X. This is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square. And you already know that expectation of x is equal to n into p. This we already found out. What is expectation of x square? So expectation of x square can be found as, how do you find this? You have to again sum over all the values of m, m equal to 0 to n. You have to take m square into probability of x is equal to m. This is how you find expectation of x square. So this uh, can again be expanded as m equal to 0 to n m square. What is probability of x equal to m? We have to use the PM of the probability mass function of a binomial distribution. So we just saw it is n c m p power m into 1 minus p whole power n minus m so this again I'm, I'm i'm just writing the final answer here i'm not solving the whole thing n into p into 1 minus p plus n square p square because i just need this final result in order to calculate variance that's why i'm just writing the final one so this is my expectation of x square so i'm uh, removing the previous steps so I just need this value in order to calculate expectation and I already know expectation of x that we calculated previously which is n into p. So here I have to find the variance which is expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square. So expectation of x square is this term which is n p into 1 minus p plus n square p square this is expectation of x square now i have to find the second term expectation of x the whole square so expectation of x is n p that square is again n square p square so this n square p square and this n square p square they cancels out so what remains n into p into 1 minus p is what remains so what information did i find now one is the variance of a binomial distribution which is n p into 1 minus p and the expectation of a binomial distribution is n p. So these are the two values. 
and one more thing is how does the graph look like so if i have a graph like this and let's say x can take different values let's say one two three and so on so what are these values these are the number of successes let's say there are a total of seven trials that means you can have up to seven successes right and here i have to give the probability so let's say probability is one Th this is one is the maximum so let us say it is distributed among these like this so maybe maybe it's something like this is the graph of a binomial distribution that is let us say probability of one success is maybe 0 0.1 probability of two success maybe this is 0 0.15 and so on let's see so this is how in general the graph of a binomial distribution would look like that is there will be discrete values what you have to see here is all these values are discrete it's not a continuous value the variable will take discrete values 1 2 3 and so on which is the number of successes so this is about binomial distribution